you, Adam and Eve. I've been dog walking now for five years. Five years! But as some of you already know, I have recently had to take a step down from dog walking after my dog, Holly, unfortunately passed away. I just personally didn't feel like I could continue with it. And you know, with all this coronavirus thing going around, I'm in self-isolation for 12 weeks anyway. So it felt like a good time to take a step back from it. So I thought I would share the tips and tricks that I have learned over the last five years. Now I'm gonna split this up into four sections, dogs, accessories, safety, and business. And I will put the time codes in the description bar below if you wanna skip ahead to any. Um, but turns out there's quite a lot of tips, so I'm just gonna have to roll quite quickly with this one because I don't want this to be like an hour long video which it probably will if I keep rambling or not just get on with it okay now of course every dog has different personalities and traits and all that sort of stuff um so some of these tips might work for some dogs and may not work for others and all that vice versa stuff so as a rule for the first few walks keep your dogs on the leads because even if the owner says that they have an amazing recall you don't know them they don't know you yet so keep them on the lead for the first couple of walks if you are walking a dog solo then I always prefer to walk on the closer side to the road and then them on the other side but for example if this is the path and they happen to be on this side which is closest to the road I always put the lead in the other hand because if they do see something or you know smell something or see a cat or something on the other side of the road and they try and go over there then there's more restriction if you have the lead in this hand whether if it's in this hand then it's just like whew, I always have it in the opposite side of of my hand if that makes sense obviously the number one rule of dog walking is if you see another dog on the lead and your dog is off the lead you put your dog on the lead because you don't know if that dog on the lead is reactive they could be blind they could be deaf my dog was deaf and i absolutely hated it when other dogs would just run over to her and she would just be like what the hell is that because obviously she can't hear so i just find it always be respectful if another dog is on the lead put yours on. In terms of recall, obviously follow the owner's instructions because obviously they have trained their dogs so try and use them as much as possible. If that does not work then a few other things to use is what's this? Um, you can gasp, that works because I've gone <gasps> and the dog's gone <gasps> you can say treats or biscuits or use a squeaky ball. Some dogs that is all you need or a new weird one that i recently figured out is doing the weird scream so you're like <laughs> and the dog looks at you like what the what was that all about i don't know why i tried that but it worked <laughs> it got their attention treats in a crinkly packet usually gets a lot of dogs to go Ooh, treats and then run back and it's like Ta -da! And on a side note, if you ever go to the shops, always pick up a bag of these because you are not wanting to run out. And if you are really running low, then cut them in half because that makes it last a little bit longer for you to get some treats. And of course, some dogs might be allergic to some treats. So if they are, then make sure you use the owner's treats that they give you. And some dogs have a sensitive tummy. So just be aware of all of that sort of stuff when you are buying treats. And also learn to whistle without using your hands, without going... <sighs> Don't do that because obviously it's not very hygienic and also if you're carrying like poo bags and leads and stuff you, you can't do that anyway so you are wanting to whistle without your hands obviously you can do the standard but I find that's not as powerful if they are far away or if it's a really windy day they can't hear you I have learned to whistle without my hands like a really strong powerful whistle so for example that sort of thing. Oda was just practicing in the car how to whistle. <laughs> Usually works really well, um, especially if the dogs are whistle trained. That always helps. Or, of course, you can just buy a whistle. <laughs> that might be easier, actually. Now, you will find some dogs who are absolutely tennis ball mad. And sometimes said dogs don't want to drop the ball. Not for love, nor money, no treats, no nothing. So, this is what I like to call the two ball trick. I should probably think of a better name for that. <laughs> so, you give the dog one, and they're happy with that. They're not letting it go, and you're like, what about this one? And they're like, a ball, another ball. And then you throw this one and they drop this one and then you just keep doing that. I know it's really obvious, but I just find it really useful if, if I have a dog like that. This is more like a reminder rather than just a tip, but it is so important to let your dog sniff on a walk because it mentally and physically enriches them. It's good for their general well-being, and it can also reduce the chances of behavioral problems, you know, resulting from boredom or frustration. So always let your dog sniff on a walk and one of the best ways to enhance this is to play a little game that i like to call hide and treat which is where you basically 
throw a treat in front of them and they have to go around and sniff it out and try and find it. It's good for them and they get a treat out of it as well. So hide and treat, definitely try it. I'm not gonna brag or anything, but I've had quite a few comments saying, that I produce quite good photos. What they don't know is I've taken about 500 photos and I've just picked about 10 that weren't blurry and bad. <laughs> Obviously the best way to get a good photo of a dog is to hold up a treat and then your phone and then tap to focus and then take the picture and they're just looking at the, the treat like, yes, give me the treat. That's one good way. Another good way is to flip your phone on its side. If you have an iPhone, I don't know if this works for Android and you just press down on these two buttons at the top, either one would do, and you can track their movements and hopefully one of them won't be blurry. I also find that getting down to their level also creates a nice photo, so yeah, just play around a bit. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but my iPhone gets really, really cold in, in winter months, um, and it just completely shuts down. First of all, always keep a charger in your car. Um, I know most people have this anyway, so definitely keep one of those in your car. A really good way of stopping your phone from dying in the cold is to stick it up your sleeve, not with the touch facing your palm, but the other way, so it's facing in the fabric because I've done this before and I've accidentally called someone and they're like hello hello and I'm like oh my god okay let's move on to accessories so a lot of these you can buy from Amazon so I'll leave a link to those below if you want to check them out before you do anything you want to get the right equipment for walking in so you want waterproof boots wellies waterproof trousers a raincoat a thicker raincoat a hat a scarf a gloves all the bells and whistles you are going to need for dog walking. For me personally, I much prefer using walking boots because I feel much more supported in them. But if you do wear walking boots, then one of the issues that you will face is that if it is wet and muddy, like it normally is in the UK, if you, when you go into a house, you have to take your walking boots off. And of course you have to undo all the knots and take each one out. And that can be quite time consuming, especially if you are on a time limit. One of my clients is a builder and he recommended this to me and they are simply shoe covers. It goes around like that and then you can walk through someone's house on them. At the end of the day, saving so much time. Next, we have towels. You are going to need towels, 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 and towels. I was quite fortunate with mine because my grandma was clearing out her house and she had loads of towels, like even tea towels, like really small towels, perfect for smaller dogs. Apparently, microfiber towels are really good for drying dogs off quickly. I didn't find much difference with them personally. Something else that you will definitely need for dog walking is a car cover. I used to have blankets in the back of my car, but I'm so glad that I switched to a proper dog car cover. I will leave the one that I use in the link below. It is amazing. This one's sort of like a, almost creates like a cradle sort of thing. However, I do have a three do door car. So if you want to do the whole cradle thing, then obviously <clears throat> that will work really well for a five door car. But it still re works really well in mine. I'll insert a little clip here so you can take a look for yourself. My car is very dirty. Please do not judge me. I am a dog walker. I used to be a dog walker. I haven't yet cleaned out my car because I'm in self-isolation anyway. <gasps> This is what my car cover looks like. Um, you attach these things up here. To create the cradle, you simply clip these around the, the headrest. And then you've got little holes to put in the seat belts. I believe it's washable as well. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that if you are interested. Obviously in the warmer months, you are going to want a dog water bottle. I'm sure you've already seen these before. I fill them up before I go out and then I refill them at a customer's house if I need to do so. And just an extra little tip with this because not all dogs are going to want to drink from this. And I have little plastic containers in my car and I will just unscrew this, pour a bit of water in there and they'll drink from that fine. But if they don't want to drink from that and they don't want to drink from this, then a little tip for you. I fill this up quite shallow quite shallow and then put a little treat in there and then it becomes a game and they've got to try and get it out and they're like trying to lick up the water and stuff that's a good way for them to drink some water if it's really really hot and of course if it is really hot unscrew this and pour some on their paws that always seems to help or pour some on the back I've done that before done that on my back as well to be honest life of a dog walk oh. this little beauty for yourself this water bottle is amazing because you just click a button here and it's this pops out. I much prefer these types of bottles because you can clip that down so no like bacteria or dog hairs get into the mouthpiece. I will leave a link to this one below because I absolutely love it. Um, I use it all the time, whether I'm dog walking or I'm just going out. Of course it's reusable, it has a straw in it. It has a little hook. So if you wanna hook it onto your bag or anything, you can. Water for you both is very, very important. Next on the list is spare leads. I have two spare 
spare leads but I always take at least one spare lead out with me because here's a handy little tip if anything does go wrong whether you're on a retractable lead or a normal lead or their collar breaks or something like that then what you can do with a normal lead is turn it into a slip lead by put basically putting that and then their head goes in there just in case I've never had to do that before in the five years that I've walked but always very useful to know and also on a side note I have done this before where I've put that around my neck and then I've looped it through here like that to stop it from falling off and uh, a dog's jumped up and pulled that and I'm like Ugh. thankfully I was wearing a scarf so it wasn't too bad but uh, I've, not, I've not done that since just to be wary of that if you have any excitable dogs that want to strangle you <laughs> If you are putting dogs in the car, then obviously use a seatbelt or a seatbelt harness or a dog carrier, or a pet carrier, a dog guard or whatever to, to restrain them in the car. Obviously that's good for you if they are trying to jump into the front seat. And if you do have a crash, then they are securely fastened. I don't think it's a legal requirement, but I have done some research which says there's no direct penalty for breaking the highway code. However, you could still be pulled over driving without due care and attention, which comes with three to nine points on your license. It could also be used as evidence against you if you were involved in an accident and also if your pet is found to have caused or contributed to an accident your car insurance could be invalid as well as any pet insurance. You could also face a fine of up to £5,000 if you're taken to court as well as points on your license. So for the dog safety, for your safety, for everyone around your safety make sure you restrain the dog or dogs in your car. Now, if you're walking near water or in a wooded area or anything like that, I have been bitten many times by horse flies and all sorts, and it has not been pleasant. The best thing that repels horse flies and stuff is something called smidge. Um, I will leave a link for that below. It is incredible stuff. It's a cream formula, it's not a spray, and it smells really nice. And I kid you not, last year I was not bitten once. You literally do have to cover every inch of your body but it is so worth it smidge definitely get it hand sanitizer will be your best friend during dog walking <laughs> forget the dogs you got your hand sanitizer um i always use it in and out of customers houses you know touching leads and door handles and what all that all that sort of stuff definitely take some with you if you can find any in this day and age now if you have a dog that you know rolls in something nasty and they smell or they're very very muddy i cannot recommend pro pooch enough i found these guys on amazon they are cruelty free they use all natural ingredients it is a dry wash shampoo so that means that all you need to do is just spray a bit on your hand or on a towel and then massage that into the fur and they smell incredible before i found that out another thing that i used were pep wipes basically they're just little wipes like this and you can wipe down any mud or, or whatnot paws really good for that now i've already mentioned the uh, squeaky ball I also have a harder ball as well and of course obviously a ball thrower as well now this one's really obvious but poo bags you're gonna need plenty of them I used to get mine from pound stretcher 69p for 100 150 and here's a little poo bag trick for you if you cannot open it and there's usually one side that is longer than the other you just have to find it and then peel it away and obviously you can get into it it just sort of expands like that so yeah that's useful and another really useful tip with the ball and poo bag is if it is soaking wet if the dog has been holding it in their mouth and it's disgusting and salivary then i pick up the ball with the poo bag and then in the poo bag it goes that saves me from touching it and all the rest of it so just a little bit more hygienic for you always check your pockets before you put anything in the washing machine because there is usually poo bags and treats and all sorts in there now there are some councils that give poo bags out for free which i think is amazing definitely check with your council if you can do that now i wish i knew of this app before i started dog walking because every time i would go to a new place or walk a new dog i would always be looking around for poo bins but fortunately in the last couple of months i have discovered an app called dog bins it is completely free and it basically maps around well around the uk i don't know if it does anywhere else but around the uk um it will show you where the nearest poo bin is in location to yourself and this only works if people dog owners dog walkers post pictures of poo bins um so i've been going around and taking photos of poo bins and uploading them. So for example, in Milton Keynes, there are loads of poo bins that people have mapped. You can also tap on the poo bin and it will show you what it looks like. Um, I feel like it will be useful to a lot of dog 
owners and a lot of dog walkers too. And finally, the accessory that you definitely need for dog walking is a cheap bag or fanny pack. Now, I much prefer a bag because it holds a lot more in it. This was really cheap, it's like from Primark a couple of years ago. Obviously, it's a little bit, you know, ripped and dog-eared and all that. <laughs> I absolutely love this bag. So, for example, in this very front pocket, I would usually put a, a little graze bar if I was feeling hungry or needed um, food during a walk. That was perfect little pocket for me there. In this pocket up here, I would have poo bags. In this pocket, I would have my treat bag, which is also another really good accessory to have. Keep a proper treat bag in you so they're not all over the place. And then in the main compartment, I would simply put my water bottle in here. I could put the dog water bottle in there. Um, there's like tissues, there's shoe covers, there's a tiny bit of hand sanitizer in there. And of course, at the back of the bigger compartment, you have a zipped compartment to store all of your customers' keys and all sorts. So I always put them in there for safekeeping. I definitely recommend getting one of these. I know a lot of people wear fanny packs um, and that does the trick just fine. I just prefer this because obviously I could put a lot more in it. Okay, so let's move on to safety. Now, the first thing you're gonna be wanting to do is you have no headphones in when you walk. I've seen so many people listening to music or whatever in their headphones whilst they're walking a dog and I'm like, no, this is not safe for you or the dog. Don't be texting and checking your phone all the time and just walking head down on your phone you are going to want to be aware of your surroundings aware of what's happening if there is a dog coming towards you if there is a, a little kid running towards you or if there is a scary man running towards you i don't know <laughs> always 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 be aware of your surroundings take out the headphones take away the distractions and only use your phone if you really need it now i mentioned this trick in the other video i did about the reality of being a dog walker i will leave that linked up here in the description bar below and that is the whatsapp trick where you can send your location to someone you trust for either 15 minutes an hour or eight hours really recommend you do this if you feel unsafe anywhere or just in general i think it's good to keep someone informed of where you are now Following on from this, I've recently discovered an app called Hollyguard. I'm sure some of you will probably have heard of it before, but it's basically an app which tracks your location. And if you are in an emergency, you shake your phone and then it will send your location to someone of your choice through text and email. Definitely check this app out if you are feeling a little bit unsafe walking around. Now, I've already mentioned this recently and people have different ways of doing it. But for me, I stored the owner's keys in that zipped pocket at the back so I always knew where it was and also don't put their address don't put their name don't put the dog's name don't put any name on there I just use color coordinated tags and I knew what that was in my brain and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this but there is an emergency trick on the iPhone I don't know about Android again I'm sorry but basically if you click your lock screen five times in a row quite quickly then it will brings up this screen which I don't know if you can see from there but there's an option to call emergency SOS so always good to know if you are in an emergency and you can't type 999 or something five clicks on your lock button and that will bring up that screen there okay let's move on to the business side of it so first of all you are going to want pet insurance um, I use pet business insurance and I pay or I paid 126 pounds a year which I did in monthly installments obviously get a security DBS check which you can do online I think it only costs like 20 30 quid or something something that I really recommend doing is making a spreadsheet and filling it out at the end of each month so you know how much you've earned you know who's paid and who hasn't and if this is really good for tax purposes as well because my next point is tax returns obviously you are going to have to register as self-employed and you have to do your own self-assessment tax return by the 31st of January the following year I think yeah so it's really useful to keep a track record of how much you have earned per month and of course keep your receipts and also take a photo of the receipt because sometimes they can fade um, so you want a proper digital record as well as a physical record for the physical receipts I keep them in a Ziploc bag so I know where they are. QuickBooks is a really good app for people who are self-employed to keep track of 
all of you know your, your expenses and your income and all that sort of stuff I haven't personally used it myself but a lot of people have told me that it's very good I found it useful to keep business cards on me just in case people wanting details or whatever I really recommend starting up a new email address with your dog walking name or company just so you can filter out all of the inquiries that come through if you are considering going professional then I recommend starting up your own website however this can cost an extra few bucks can't it so an alternative to that is creating up your own Facebook page which I think works wonders I much prefer using a Facebook page because you can share it you can get people to write reviews on it you can post photos and updates you can put your own contact details your location your prices all of this information a little bit about yourself so that's definitely a good alternative to to making a website of course don't only post photos of dogs if you have the owner's permission first I also recommend if you are starting up a Facebook page to get an app called pages which you can manage everything on that page from rather than going into Facebook and having to do it through there now obviously you're going to want to meet the dog and the owner before you start walking the dog so I really recommend creating a form for them to fill out so things like their name and the breed and the date of birth and if they have any medical conditions are they allowed off the lead and of course you are going to want to put the terms and conditions in as well and make sure that they sign it fortunately for me I worked for a company called sit and stay UK who were amazing and they sorted out all the terms and conditions all the you know GDPR which is something else you need to consider so that's something that I didn't have to worry about or figure out how to do so make an invoice spreadsheet template and use that when you send um, to customers some people want an invoice at the end of the month some people want to pay weekly so obviously that just depends so something you need to consider is how you're going to get a cover if you are sick or if you're going on holiday or something like that so maybe you can reach out to another dog walking company and see if you can you know share dogs or, or something if that ever happens fortunately in sit and stay we had a whole group of walkers so we could just sort of cover each other's dogs so that's the business side of it I think I covered everything but if you have any questions obviously just drop them down below so one last extra tip for you is it's okay to say no I remember when I first started I was driving here there and everywhere and my parents petrol was just going off the charts it's okay to say no to jobs that are a little bit further out if you are overwhelmed with too many jobs then it's okay to say no so that is quite a lot of tips for you I hope some of them have been useful I will say that I was always really grateful to, to have this job and the flexibility that it gave and you know singing at the top of my lungs whilst I was driving in between jobs that was always a great thing as well I'm definitely gonna miss that well I'm, I'm gonna miss all of my dogs and the owners as well because you get to know them on a personal level and um, you, you just naturally become friends with them so it's been one of the best jobs I've ever had it's been the best job that I've ever had let's be honest Kate working in Marks and Spencer's was nothing <laughs> compared to this and you never know I, uh, I might dip back into it again at some point who knows I don't know what I'm doing to be honest thank you so much for watching to the end this has been a really long video I hope some of these tips have been useful if you have any tips and tricks then drop them in the comments below give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you want it and I will see you in the next one if you've made it this far in the video then drop a comment down below with the secret word Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs>